Our next guest, longtime NFL coach, now an analyst for NBC, Football Night in America, the USFL, and Notre Dame football. He is Jason Garrett. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Thanks, Jerem. It's good to be here with you guys. We're excited about this matchup, and I'm sure you are. What has stuck out in your preparation for uh, what seems like a big-time game in a big-time stadium? Yeah, re really exciting uh, to be a part of this game. You know, right, right from the outset when you first start watching the tape, it's just fun to see BYU play. Uh, one of the things that's been interesting to us is just the sophistication of the offense. It goes back to, to Lavelle Edwards, you know, all the way back in the 70s and early 80s with some of the great players that he had all the way through Detmer in the 90s. And, and they always seem so advanced in the passing game back then. And that DNA certainly has stuck around. Uh, Jaron Hall is exciting. The receivers are exciting. So uh, just to watch them play, uh, the, the offensive style that they play with, they, they really play at a high level. So that, that's an exciting thing. It's a veteran team. So it's been really enjoyable to watch the tape and prepare for the game. And, you know, we've been doing, we've done a couple of the Notre Dame games, so we know their team well. And they've really played well the last couple of weeks. The, the game against North Carolina was the best team effort they've had all year long. So I think it's going to be a great matchup, a lot of good players, and certainly an exciting venue here in Las Vegas. How good is Jaron Hall to you? Is he an NFL first-round guy, second-round guy, a draft pick for sure, it would seem? It's hard for me to know the rounds, but you don't have to watch three plays to realize this guy's a good football player. And uh, something I've said for years that, that, that jumped out at me is, you know, the number one trait for a quarterback is instinct, the feel to play the game, the aptitude to play the game. And, you know, we've seen it through the years, quarterbacks come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, but, but the one trait that all the great ones have, regardless of how big they are, how athletic they are, what their arm talent is, every great quarterback has instincts and feel for the game. And he certainly has that. You can see it when he throws the ball from the pocket. You can see it when they have design movements. You can see it when the play breaks down. He has outstanding vision. Uh, he can throw the ball from, from different angles. And uh, he's very accurate. He's got playmaking skills. So he's an exciting player to watch. And he doesn't turn it over. BYU's got one giveaway tied for first in the country. Notre Dame has one takeaway. That's last in the country. Do you feel like turnovers will play a factor in this game? Well, you know, turnovers play a factor in every game. And, and something we always talked about when I was coaching was, you know, the first player to sign a, a, a pro contract was this guy named Pudge Heffelfinger in 1892. <laughs> and you know, the, the, the game was different back then in so many different ways. But the turnover battle won back then, and it wins today. And we used to always show our team statistics from the past year, the past two years, the past 10, 20, 30, 50 years in the NFL. And if you win the turnover battle, you have a great chance of winning the game, plus one, plus two, plus three. It, it, it's amazing. So um, that will always be a critical statistic. When you talk about Jaron Hall, Besides the instincts and the playmaking ability, the decision-making is so impressive and how he takes care of the ball. Notre Dame has certainly been on a quest to improve that defensively. They played good defense, but they haven't made those game-changing turnovers or takeaways. So it's something they're emphasizing. I know it's something on the forefront of Jaron Hall's mind, and it will determine the outcome of this ball game. I really believe that the, typically the team that wins that battle is going to win the game. Pudge Heffelfinger wore the other Y, as we like to say, uh, at Yale. You can appreciate that as a, a, a Princeton guy. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Notre Dame and BYU. Like, which version of these teams are going to show up? And we were just talking about that in the previous segment. Is, is this the Notre Dame team that put up a lot of points in UN, on UNC and the offense kind of woke up there with Drew Pine and those three running backs getting over 100 yards combined, receiving rushing? And then is it the BYU team that beat Baylor or is it the BYU team that – didn't show up against Oregon. What do you expect tomorrow? Well, in terms of Notre Dame, uh, one thing that, you know, just having followed it and, and been around them here for the last month or so, uh, there's no doubt that there's some moving parts uh, on their team, uh, starting with the quarterback. 
And, uh, you know, so sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the quarterback to settle in and get comfortable playing to the level he needs to. It looked like about halfway through the Cal game, Drew Pine got comfortable. And uh, it kind of clicked in. He relaxed. He started playing. Uh, they ran the ball very well. Offensive line was coming off the ball. They have three backs who they like that, that they got involved. And that sort of took some pressure off of him. He settled in and made the plays he needed to make. And, uh, and, and, and to me, so they've been a little bit of a work in progress because of the quarterback. They have some young offensive linemen, a new offensive line coach. They pride themselves on being uh, offensive linemen. You, they've had some great ones come out there in recent years. So it looks like they're settling in and playing better. They've run the ball a lot better here the last couple of weeks. So from an offensive standpoint, I think they're growing and they're optimistic about where they're headed. Defensively, you said it. I think they've played well throughout the year. The biggest thing is they haven't made these dramatic takeaways. And that's something they're still going to continue to emphasize. But they have a solid veteran group on the defensive side. In terms of BYU, like I said, they're exciting to watch. Uh, they're, they're fun to watch. Uh, you know, they've been inconsistent, but that's every team early on in the season. Uh, they've played some teams with different level of competition. They've, they've played really well at times. They've played only okay at times. But there's a lot of pieces in place that they like. They, too, like their offensive line, big, strong, athletic guys who can protect the passer. They're getting some of their receivers back, the veteran guys who have been good players for them, Nakua and, and Romney, along with some young guys who have kind of stepped up in their place and shown that they can be contributors too. So it's a good mix of guys. I think they're the, they're at their best when they mix in the run along with the prolific passing game that they have. You know, from a defensive standpoint, I think the biggest question for them is, you know, their run defense. Uh Utah State found some opportunities, particularly early on in that game, to simply run the ball against them. So I think that's an area that they have to continue to try to shore up, particularly against Notre Dame, because they're going to try to run the ball in this game. But there, there's a veteran presence on that defense, a lot of guys with a lot of experience on all three levels, and they don't wow you physically. I don't know if they have a lot of game wreckers, but they play defense the right way, and it's going to be a really good matchup on both sides. We're talking to Jason Garrett, who's on the call with NBC tomorrow here on BYU Sports Nation. One of those guys who hopes to get a lot of yards for Notre Dame is Audric Estime, who said Wednesday, BYU has a lot of good players, but, quote, I feel like their players don't match the players we have, end quote. Certainly on the paper, the Irish are very talented. As a coach, were you okay with comments like that, or did you like them avoiding locker room material and bulletin board material? You know, I, I've been around some coaches who spend so much time making sure players don't say anything they shouldn't say. Um, and, and, and I don't know that I agree to those extremes, but I do think it's important to caution your guys about saying stuff that's red meat for the opponent. There's really no reason to say it. You want your guys to be confident. You want them to have a swagger, but you really want them focusing on themselves. And uh, And sometimes that stuff is just – maybe a little bit of a lack of discipline, and oftentimes it comes back to haunt you. So uh, you kind of want them locked in on what they need to do, limit the distractions as much as they can. But, you know, sometimes guys say stuff, and the biggest thing after they do is they better back it up. Certainly he'll have an opportunity against BYU tomorrow. Michael Mayer really pops on film. This is one of the best, if not the best, tight end in the country. Brock Bowers of Georgia and, and Michael seem to be duking it out for perhaps top tight end. How does Notre Dame use him so effectively? And if you're BYU, how do you slow him down at all? Well, Notre Dame has become tight end U. You know, when you're in the NFL uh, and you look at the tight ends coming out in the draft, oftentimes they're Notre Dame guys, they're Stanford guys, hey, they're BYU guys, you know, but not a lot of college programs are playing with a traditional tight end. Uh, Michael Mayer is a traditional tight end. He's big and physical and you put his hand on the ground and be an inline tight end. He can block both as a pass protector and as a run blocker. He's continuing to refine those skills. But then he can open them up, whether he's by himself on the, on the backside of a one-by-three formation or in the slot, and, and he can do a lot of different things. He's a very good route runner. He's quarterback friendly. He wins in man. He, he finds holes in zone. He can be a vertical threat. 
when he gets the ball in his hands, he's a physical runner afterwards. And, and, and when you meet the guy, he just has a swagger about him. He has a confidence about him. He knows he's a good player. And I think that shows up in how he plays. He's not a perfect tight end. He'd be the first to tell you that. But he's grown. He's passionate about the game and wants to keep getting better. And Tommy Reese, their offensive coordinator, has done a really good job using him. You'll see him make plays within the scheme of their passing game. But then you'll see him isolated in formations to create a matchup. And you can tell the quarterback is looking there first. And that's a good thing to do when you have a player like that. As a former offensive coordinator, do you like Booth Cam? Because I'm not sure Tommy Reese does after the Cal game. <laughs> How about that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think it's good for TV. You know, I'm a TV guy now, so <laughs> it makes it interesting. I don't know. I that was I'll... always downstairs, so, yeah. you know, I, I was subject to the other cameras that they had. But, uh, you know, that Booth Cam is interesting and you know, it's up to the director and the producer to make sure they choose it wisely, <laughs> choose to use it wisely. But uh, Tommy's a heck of a coach, and he's a passionate guy, and he loves teaching his his guys and helping them become better. And, and I think that passion is something that makes him who he is. Tommy was the quarterback when these two last played back in uh, 2013 in South Bend. They caught quite a moment against Cal, if you saw it. It was crazy. For BYU, you talked about um, you know, offensively. The Cougars have struggled to establish the run game early in games. In the third and fourth quarter, they've been able to find it with Christopher Brooks last week, uh, Miles Davis the week before that. How hard is it as an offensive coordinator, Jason, to establish the run when you don't necessarily know who the main guy is? Does that matter? Well, establishing the run is an interesting thing. You know, I, I've, I've found through the years that, you know, oftentimes coaches will go into games and they say, we're going to establish the run, and you can see them – you know, kind of banging their head against the wall, you know, early on in the game, we're going to run it, we're going to run it, we're going to run it again, we're going to run it, and they keep running it, and they never get into the flow of the game. And, and the thing you have to remember is, on the defensive side, typically what they've been preaching is, we got to stop the run, we got to stop the run. You know, so this thing goes back and forth, and 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 I like BYU style and that, hey, you know, we're, we're going to put some air in this defense at the outset, we're going to throw it, we're going to run it, we're going to mix it, and then as the game goes on, we're going to wear them out with the running game. And, and so typically, to me, that tends to be a better formula because everyone's so geared up to stop the run. And sometimes when you don't have that early success, there's a lot of frustration that 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 creeps in for everybody involved. And I think the better approach is let's have balance, let's attack different ways, and hopefully we get ahead. And as the game wears on, we wear them out by handing the the, the ball and, we, and we, we beat them up, you know, running the ball late. And I think that's been a good formula for BYU. And it's actually been a formula that Notre Dame has used as well. And that's typically when offenses play their best. Baylor ran it 52 times for 2.9 yards per carry. And uh, it didn't work. And I swear Aaron Roderick hears that, uh, you know, established running goes, okay, we'll throw it. Like you mentioned, Jason, we appreciate the time. Uh, we look forward to the broadcast tomorrow at 7:30 Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Have a great call. Hey, great being with you. You guys do a heck of a job. Thank it's you, It's going to be a fun game. It, it